Well, the time has finally come to discuss Scott Lynch's The Lies of Locke Lamora in this awesome hardcover, mass market kind of size book. Let's talk about it. So The Lies of Locke Lamora by Scott Lynch is honestly one of the best fantasy books that I've read in some time, probably one of the best just in general that I've read, and has some of my favorite dialogue that I've read in the genre. Now, I did finally get around to reading this uh, somewhat recently, a couple of weeks ago, after many, many a recommendation telling me that I would love it, and everybody that said that was absolutely correct, because damn, this is some of the best character work and dialogue that I've seen in a book in a long time. This was totally up my alley from the character work, the dialogue, the interactions, the friendship between Locke and John. Um, I haven't seen a sort of friend dynamic done this well since either, you know, Darrow and Severo and Red Rising or the band in the Trader's Blade series. Just the that group of guys, their banter back and forth is so fantastic. And that's a lot of what I got here. Just their their interactions with each other, the way that they play off of one another on all these different missions and stuff that they're on is just fantastic. So what is this book? So this is book one of what I believe is a seven series Gentleman Bastards sequence. Now, I think book four was supposed to come out a while back, and it's now been many, many, many years since it was supposed to be published. Uh, I, I don't know the details behind it, but I'm, I'm pretty sure there was like personal life stuff that happened with Lynch that kind of took him away from his writing. So I have no idea if the series is ever going to be finished. And that's a negative for a lot of people. And that was one of the main reasons, really the only reason that I hesitated for so long to pick it up was I was stuck in that mindset of, well, I love A Song of Ice and Fire, and that's five books of potential seven that are likely never to be finished. Everyone tells me to read Name of the Wind, and that's two books with a third that who knows if that's ever going to come out. And this was another one where they're saying, you know, these are fantastic books, but the series might not ever be complete. Um, I've kind of come around to the other side of that argument now where I don't really care if it gets finished or not. Uh, I think this book as itself stands alone as a fantastic standalone fantasy tale. And let's get into why. I don't think you need the series to be finished to enjoy the hell out of this book. I know I didn't, and I am so happy that I finally read it because I absolutely loved it. So let's talk about it. So as I mentioned briefly before, we follow our main character, Locke Lamora, and his best buddy, Jean, as they and the gentleman bastards lie, cheat, steal, 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 and steal. Uh, they steal quite a bit. And one of my favorite lines of description in this book it wasn't even dialogue when describing Locke Lamora <laughs> the book says if he had a bloody gash across his throat and the physiker was trying to sew it up Lamora would steal the needle and thread and die laughing he he steals too much <laughs> so fantastic uh introduction to that character I absolutely love that I knew that I was going to love the writing some of the other dialogue I I it was one of the most like highlighted books that I had while I was reading it early on. I I hate going back and forth between physical in the book and on my Kindle because I like highlighting some of these things. So I was highlighting a lot on my Kindle, uh, not in the book. I'm not a psycho. And I just kept highlighting these fantastic dialogue moments where just the, the sheer profanity level of this book is amazing and it's exactly what I want. All these characters talk shit. They... <laughs> They swear at each other all the time. They're quippy and funny. And just there's a lot of witty humor throughout. And I absolutely love that about this dialogue. And it's a very character-driven, um, dialogue-heavy book. There's not a lot of exposition dumps. There are a lot of descriptions of the scene, the scenery around you, things like that, to really set the scene for what's about to play out. Uh, and these characters are just on several different missions, heists, whatever you want to call it. And it's just... Oh my god, it's so entertaining. Um, I, I kept getting vibes of like the Italian job or even some like Mission Impossible where you've got like people wearing masks and taking off to reveal themselves and all these different just like crazy insane scenarios that our characters find themselves in, which just creates a ton of fun for this book. Um, it's honestly the, the strongest point of this book is just the character interactions in these various scenes and how they talk to one another. Because the entire time, like, I laughed 
several times out loud, which rarely happens in a book. And it's not even an outright comedy. It's just the the situations that they're in and the dialogue being so smart and well done. It made me laugh uh, plenty of times. And and that's that's great for me in a book because I read tons of fantasy that does not make me laugh and is a little bit darker and certainly not happy. Uh, you know, I just finished Kingdoms of Death by Christopher Rocchio, which is a sci-fi book. But again, it's it's not a happy book. And those are really my general thoughts on this. The, the characters are engaging. The dialogue is fantastic. The scenarios that they're in are batshit insane at times and just a ton of fun. The villains, I'll say, I mean, everyone's kind of shitty in this city of Kimura where the good guy protagonists are also thieves and not great people and everyone is just worse than them. Um, So you have no reason or you have no problem rooting for our main characters because you want them to succeed and get one over on these absolutely abhorrent people. Um, This is also a, a very low fantasy book. It's, it's really, grounded in a lot of ways as far as there's not a ton of magic and crazy like high epic fantasy stuff happening there is a little bit of magic but it's sort of restricted to certain types of characters in the world that you learn about and just in general it's it's really just focused on these two characters and i mean they drive the plot they drive the entire narrative and i mean if you somehow manage to dislike Locke and john we're not going to like the book, but I feel like 99% of people are going to enjoy these two characters. Uh, they're some of the best that I've read in a while, and I absolutely love this. And once again, I mean, this this is a great standalone. It, it could have honestly functioned as a standalone and never had any kind of sequels, and I would be perfectly content with what we got here. The way the book ends is not some like crazy like sequel bait or cliffhanger in the sense of like, Oh man, like you have to pick up the next one. Like it, it could have just ended and it would have been a wonderful ending. And I'm definitely excited to continue and see where these next two go because I don't really know how much this is going to expand. If it's going to stay, you know, a little bit of the same as what we got here, where you're just going on different missions throughout. Um, I don't know. I, I have a feeling it's going to expand uh, a lot, <laughs> but. But I'm definitely looking forward to it, and I I recommend this to everybody. Honestly, if unless you just don't like characters swearing, like there's nothing that's really going to turn you off from this book. If you like character-driven novels, if you like low fantasy and just witty humor and dialogue, definitely going to work for you. So, high high recommend for me. I loved it, and I'm excited to continue. Um, but that's going to do it for this one, guys. So until next time, keep reading.